So now we start to make our rolls. Rolls are called Chinese rolls in Sri Lanka. So here, if you look, I've got the same oil which I got from frying these onions earlier. So what, what I'm going to do now is to make the filling for the rolls. So about a cup of onion, garlic and ginger. I'm going to put a generous portion of garlic, so that's about three tablespoons. So with the ginger, again I'm putting two tablespoons of ginger, some green chili, and some tender leaves and lemon oil. So these are the tender leaves. Flavors are still there. And then some lemon grass. Wow, rosy smells. It smells amazing. I have some dried chilies here. So I'm just chopping the dried chilies further into very small pieces, as I keep calling it, the addictive flavors of chili. So look at it, it's like a little ruby scattered everywhere. So I'm going to keep trying this until it's golden brown. And, the, and what I'm going to add to the rolls is lamb, the minced lamb, which I have here, which we've cooked earlier, and some potatoes. And for the vegetables, I'm going to use some grated carrots here, and some pepper pork or green peas. See you back in 10 minutes once everything is cooked together. But before you go, can I have a second look? What you can't experience here is the lovely aromas of the pandan leaves and the lemon grass. Uh, it's called Rampa and Sarah. And in goes the curry leaves. A handful, they're dry. I'm just going to crush them in there. So now I've just added the lamb. So it looks like this at the moment. I want to make it a lot more flavorsome. So I'm going to add more cinnamon. So it's a pinch of cinnamon, maybe half a teaspoon and a pinch of cloves. That's very important, so be careful not to add too much. And this is about half a teaspoon of cardamom, some tomato paste. Because earlier when I cooked the lamb, I used a, a tin of tomatoes. The tomato paste is a lot more condensed. Once this is now completely mixed, I will add the curry powder. I have the Madras spice paste. I will add a tablespoon of that and mix it together. Now for the vegetables, I will add the carrots. All these long pieces can be pulled out when we're filling the rolls, so not to worry. So to this, I'll add about five grated carrots, medium size. There, there are no strict guidelines as to what you can actually put in your Sri Lankan Chinese rolls. So now I'm going to add the potato, maybe half a cup, or you can even use garden peas. Combine all together. So I'm just going to cover this and leave it for about five minutes. See you back in five minutes. So I've just had a quick taste of this. So the peas are cooked, the carrots are cooked, and all the flavors are combined together, and it is ready to go into our rolls. So here I'm going to make a very quick egg wash, but in this egg wash, I'm going to add a little bit of flour. One egg, just one tablespoon, or maybe two, of flour. So I'm going to add some water to it, like so, and a pinch of salt, and beat it together. And I'm going to keep adding flour until I get the right consistency of a batter mixture. So I combine this together and make a lovely batter to dip our rolls in. So that looks about right. 
So now here I have the batter ready, which is the egg wash, but I've mixed a bit of flour into it, which is plain flour. Uh, and then here, this is where the pastry sheets come from. It's probably from China and it is called TYJ Spring Roll Pastry. It's very, it looks very much like phyllo pastry, but it feels and it behaves very different. So it, it dries quickly so that I've got a, a muslin cloth wet. I put it over it to keep it from drying out. So I've got one sheet here and I'm going to take a filling, put it in the middle here. Try and bring it closer to yourself, towards the water. And take out the large pieces so you hang the leaves away from the earth. Then you roll the two edges to seal the two sides. Make sure everything is very straight. You want to cover your filo pastry. So it's not it's not really filo pastry at all. It looks very much like filo, but it behaves absolutely different. Like so. And then each time you make one, leave it there. See that one slightly longer than the other. So I've done two and I've got 30 sheets here. So I've got just another 28 to go. So with the lamb mixture that I had, I've managed to make 14 of these Sri Lankan style Chinese rolls. And while I still have the pastry sheets out here, um, so there's going to be 30 of these pastry sheets here, I'm going to make so I've made the lamb ones, I'm going to make some turkey ones now. So the turkey that I cooked earlier is here. So I've kept the rumpus here and the parapincha there. I'm going to add the remainder of the grated carrots. So it's about six large carrots, grated, peeled and grated. It's gone in there. A pinch of salt to flavor the carrots. So basically what I'm trying to do is to try and have a lot of flavor in the raw mixture. So to get the flavors, I'm going to put some ruby red dried chilies and some green chilies, some spring onions, just a handful of spring onions and a teaspoon of the red and the green chilies. I'm going to combine everything together. Squeeze, excuse the squeak about a teaspoon of ginger, a tablespoon of garlic, mix everything together. If I come, I'm going to add a handful of petit pois. You can even use garlic peas for that. And it'll defrost and separate in the steam whilst cooking. See you in five minutes. So here you can see the turkey meat, which is now mixed with the cooked carrots. Carrots and the green peas have got well combined with the turkey meat. I'm going to add some spring onions, like so, and some grated cheese. Thank you very much. And about a cup of grated cheese is going in there. And that will give it a beautiful flavor. Now, the Sri Lankan rolls would not have had grated cheese, but here we use the cheese in almost every dish that we make. So, this cheese is going to make it very, very delicious. It will melt in the residual heat. So, here I am making the turkey Chinese rolls. So what I'm going to do to these ones is add some egg. So just slice my egg that way. And this way I can add just very thin slices so it's not going to put you through the filling. Just three pieces will do. Like so. And then roll it. made two and I only have another 15 to go.
last of my Sri Lankan Chinese rolls and just I want to just give you a couple of tricks of the trade as it were. So when you open the packet of the spring roll pancakes, don't put the damp cloth directly on it like they, they'd um, instruct you to. Use a cling film. So you put, if your pancakes are laid flat, use the cling film and then on top of the cling film, you use a damp masking cloth. Because if you use the cloth directly on the pancakes, what happens is the, the water, the dampness from the cloth, permeates through the pancakes and they become sticky and it's very difficult to separate them. And also, make sure that it's filled edge to edge and when you roll it, you hold it tight, it's almost like rolling a sushi. But with sushi you have a mat. Again, you have to use the spring roll pancake like a mat and then you roll it and shape it the way you want it to be. So I have my lamb, turkey and fish spring rolls. Next, I'm going to show you how to put this batter on. So I've got a pancake batter mix. So dip that in there and then breadcrumb and then straight to frying. And I'm very excited to show you where I'm going to be frying it because I'm actually going to be in our rear garden and I have the two hobs with the pans ready, poised to go. And, and that's where I'm going to be frying them. So see you shortly. So you take your roll like so and you egg wash it. You can either dip it in there or you could do what I'm doing with a brush. So you put it on the breadcrumbs, like so, and make sure that the breadcrumbs are well coated on the roll. And then just roll it like so, so it holds its shape, and then it's ready for frying. So I've done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. I'm going to take them outside to fry. Then I'll come back and continue with the rest. So here we are in a rather tranquil setting. We're going to fry, shallow fry our Sri Lankan Chinese rolls. So here goes the pan. I need to get them nice and hot. And soon after, I have to pour some oil. So I'm pouring about a cup of oil into each. I want to get that oil to about 175 degrees C. And once it's hot, I'll be dropping my rolls into them and cooking them. So now I can see it's still not very hot. So you know the oil is hot. If you drop something small into it, it should bubble and come to the top. Now this one's ready, that one isn't. So I'm going to start using my rolls into this. Now remember the filling is cooked and the pastry is very thin and it's just the breadcrumbs that I'm trying to just brown. So it'll take about half a minute on each side once the oil is very hot. So that one's not bubbling. Gently oil. You can see it's sizzling away. Come closer. I'm going to try and turn this one over. So I need a couple of minutes. So here they are, they are beautifully fried and they're crispy and it's time for a taste test. So you've seen me make the patties and also the Chinese rolls with our style and it's time for a taste test. Half is the frozen. Mm. Very crispy on the outside. It's lovely and gooey and chewy on the inside. You can see the egg and the green peas and all of that. And it tastes really good. Um, and if you'd like to make your own, you should really try it because it's really lovely. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.